gonna show you how to tie. It's called a green weenie. It's it's a funny name, but I'm telling you, this is probably one of the most popular patterns uh, if you're a Pennsylvania fly angler. This is designed to imitate a wide range of things, but two things I think it really imitates well is sunken inchworms that come off, you know, typically like in the June time period throughout the summer. This does a great job imitating a sunken inchworm. And then also, if you pick up rocks along a trout stream, you'll see these long kind of olive green sort of larva looking things. A lot of times those are going to be what we call caddis larva. And this is an imitation or a pattern that imitates those two things really well. Before we do that though, I just want to explain to you the hooks. With fly fishing, there's a number of hooks available on the market today. And what you need to think about is what you're doing. This is a pattern that's designed to be fished below the surface. So this is what we call a nymph hook. A nymph hook is a heavier wire, heavier gauge hook that is a little more robust, but the weight of that wire is gonna help that fly sink. As compared to a fly where you're trying to float it on the surface, maybe you're trying to imitate an adult mayfly, or caddis fly, or a grasshopper, or a floating ant. That is a time where you're going to be using what you call a dry fly hook. It's a thinner wire hook that is designed to float better than this heavier gauge hook. And also this hook right here, you'll see attached to it, inserted, there's a bead. Just about any time you see a bead on a hook, it's going to tell you it is a nymph or a pattern that is designed to be fished below the surface. Beads, there's nothing in nature that looks like this. But beads do two things. One, it adds a little extra weight. It will help your fly sink. And then two, it just gives it a little glare. You know, just a, a little gaudiness, a little flash. And in some situations, that extra reflection, that gaudiness kind of gets the trout's attention. So don't be afraid to fish with beadhead flies from time to time. The other thing is the parts of the hook. When you look at the hook, there's different terminologies, but the parts you should re really re remember with the hook is obviously this is your eye that you're going to be using to attach your leader material or your tippet onto the hook to fish it. The one thing you'll always point out and you'll hear any good fly tire instruct is that when you're tying flies, you never want to crowd the eye, meaning that a lot of times when you're tying flies, you start crowding the eye, meaning you're starting to tie materials a little too close to the eye. That means when you get to the trout stream and if there's material over that eye, it's often going to be very challenging for you to take your fishing line and put it through that, that eye. So always make sure that eye is nice and clean. That will save a lot of heartaches and headaches later on down the road. The next part is what we call the shank. The shank is this straight section of wire right below the eye. And basically the shank is the straight section of this wire. And then the moment this goes into this bend, this is what we call the bend of the hook. This is what we call the curvature of the hook, and it goes down to the hook point. With this hook right here, there's no barb, and I've debarbed this before I inserted this hook. Now, we all know the reasons we use barbless hooks. It's a lot easier on the fish, but also it's going to be a lot easier on you because Murphy's Law is if it's gonna happen, it will happen. And there's been a number of times where if you're fishing, you're gonna hook yourself. And I can tell you from personal experience every year, it's a lot easier to take a barbless fly out of your skin than it is a barbed fly. But then also, it's gonna be a lot easier on your fly itself. Once, you're, once you hold onto that fish, and if you keep it or you wanna release it, whatever it is, you're, need, you're going to need to take that fly out of that fish's mouth. And the fly that is barbed, it's going to be challenging where you're going to have to really grab onto that hook and try to rip it out of the fish's mouth. One, it's going to do more damage to the fish if you want to release it back to the water, which is not a good thing. But then two, you're going to have to really often even take a pair of clamps or pliers and grab onto that hook to pull that fly out. And anytime you do that, you're going to actually put some damage and harm onto your fly. So barbless flies are going to be a lot easier coming out of your skin. going to be less wear and tear on the fish's jaw. And then also when you do stick yourself, because it's going to happen, it's going to be a lot easier to take out. Now, once we have our hook in place, what we do is we're trying to insert this so this hook is in there nice and secure. What we don't want is to put this right on the very tip of this vise, and you hear exactly that, that snap. One is this is going to do a lot of damage to your vise, 
And then two, this can often turn this into a flying projectile, the hook that is. We don't want that. So what we want to do is when we insert this hook, we want to make sure part of that bend is nice and buried. And the other thing is when we insecure this hook, the shank is nice and straight. Because when you are attaching your thread onto this hook, you go for a break, or if you're reaching for another materials, if there is a, an incline or a decline, that material is going to slide down and often your fly is going to come undone. So make sure that that base or that hook shank is on a nice even plane. Right there. So once we have that secure. Now the next step is we're going to attach this bobbin onto your hook to secure this. And the way we do that is we're going to use our bobbin hand. I'm a right hander so I'm holding onto the bobbin with my right hand. And when I grab onto the bobbin, I'm grabbing onto this middle part right here. I'm not grabbing onto the actual thread. I'm grabbing onto this bobbin handle right here. That's what this is designed to do, allowing that thread to go smoothly through the tube. So I grab onto this base, and all I'm going to do is just lay this thread right on top of the hook shank. And I'm going to make, holding my left hand tight, I'm going to take my right hand, make one wrap, and then I'm going to actually start wrapping back over top of this short tag. Do it two, three, and we're going to keep constant tension all the way through this to lock that into place. And I'm using colored thread right now just so you can see this. And we just trim the excess. And when you are wrapping your thread, one of the things you need to think about is look how close this bobbin is to my hook. Because what we're trying to do is be as efficient as possible. Meaning the closer this thread or this bobbin is to my thread, the shorter the little strokes. I don't need to really go into a wide range. I can make a lot of quick little wraps in a short amount of time. But if, my, if I pull my thread away from, my bobbin away from my thread and give myself maybe seven or eight inches, when I make my wraps, it takes a lot longer to go around that rotation. So keep this nice and tight. Let that bobbin hang and then you can make these really nice tight little wraps. And we're gonna wrap all the way down to the end of the bend. And then normally on most hooks, by the end of the bend, if you look at where the barb would have been and you let your thread hang, that is usually where the bend starts in most circumstances. Now this pattern, as we talked about, is called the green weenie. It is such a simple little pattern. This is called chenille. It's the material that you use. It's, a, it's a, like a con chenille on the cord. But we're going to use this, it looks like pipe cleaner, but we're going to use this to attach onto the hook and wind around the hook to imitate a larva. That could be a caddis larva or a sunken inchworm. So anytime you are attaching material onto the hook, we're going to do what we call a pinch technique. Meaning this, when I turn this bobbin inside here, what I'm going to do, I'll show you here in just a second. You can, there's going to be a valley in between my thumb and my index finger. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my wraps and anytime I want to attach or fasten the material onto this hook shank, I'm going to take this, what we call this V, I'm going to take this thread, I'm going to run it up through this valley, and I'm going to create a loop, and I'm going to create a noose, and then I'm going to pull it straight down on top of that hook shank. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the chenille, and I'm going to lay this on the top of the hook shank. And doing this pinch technique, I'm going to go in between my thumb and my index finger and make a loop. And I'm going to take that loop and I'm going to slide it down off my finger and create a noose and lock that into place. We're going to lock that in nice and tight once and twice. And we're going to just wrap forward, wrapping it all the way down. Really making sure that's nice and secure. And we can wrap back a few times to really make sure that material is locked in place in smooth, constant motions. We're not letting go, we're just making sure we have contact and tension every turn. And with this pattern, all we're gonna do is we're gonna take this thread and we're gonna wind all the way up to the bead. Now with my hand, I'm gonna let go of the bobbin, the thread's all the way up to the eye. I'm just gonna take this, I'm gonna hold the chenille, I'm gonna hold this over top, and I'm going to alternate hands between my left hand and my right hand as I'm making my wrap. So right now with my right hand, I'm going over the top away, coming underneath towards me. Switch hands with my left hand. Go over top, away, underneath towards me. And this is what we're going to call touching wraps. 
we're going to make a body and each wrap is going to be directly right in front of the last wrap. So the edges of the chenille are touching and we're going to wind this all the way up to the bead. And once I come in contact with the bead, right there, we need to come in from behind. So what I mean by that is this material right here, if I just let this go, it's going to come undone. So what I need to do is come from behind. So I'm going to hold my chenille out at an angle, and then I'm going to come up from behind with my left hand, and just make a wrap around it once. I'm going to make a second wrap behind it twice. And pull that down tight. I'm going to secure that. Switch hands, pull down, create some tension, and then we're just wrapping on the front side once and twice. Take your scissors, remember your good serrated blades here, and we're going to create a little tension, pull that chenille upward, take your scissors, and make a cut. It makes a nice clean cut. Now, what I'm going to do is Make just one more, two more wraps, just really lock that into place. Now this is what we call a whip finishing tool. Again, go online, check out, there's all kinds of cool little resources out there. There's a half inch tool, and then there's also what we call a whip finisher. And you can also do this with your hand. But all we're doing is we're laying this tool right on top of the thread. And we're going to allow this thing to free spin, essentially, until we create a triangle. We create that triangle and then we take that triangle and we're going to wrap it around the hook shank three times and undo that. And what that does is that triangular loop right there that we're creating right here by laying this on top, allowing us to free spin, is going to allow us to create a, a finishing knot. So when you cut this off, this is going to be locked in place and this fly is going to hold off, hold in, uh, in place for a long period of time. The other thing you can do you can just do a half hitch with your hand. So what we can do is just lay your palm of your fingers down on the thread and we just make a, a turn right here. Make a loop and then go underneath and just lock that into place. There's one right there. Lay the, your two fingers right here. Go over top and just make a loop right here. We're just going to twist, make this X, go underneath and then we're just going to seal this loop. So there are two ways right there of creating a finishing knot. And once you're done, you take your snip, your scissors, and you just snip the tag right there. And there you have is a finished green weenie. Now, if you want to add even a little more durability, you can take head cement, and you can just take a, just a little pinch of head cement and just lock that into that thread. You can use Sally Hansen's Hard as Nail Polish. But all in all, if you do a good whip finish or a good half hitch, there really is no need for head cements or you know nail polish to help lock that fly in. So there you have it, the green weenie. Very simple fly, but a pattern that you can use for both trout, panfish, and in some cases even bass. So I hope you enjoy this and thank you for watching.